Today's presentation is about the future proofing of food packaging. We'll talk about food safety. We'll talk about the availability of food for people. And we'll talk about how we need to manage these two crises together with the emerging one, which is making sure that food and food packaging is sustainable. After all, food packaging and the food industry contributes almost one quarter or slightly more than one quarter of all uh, carbon emissions on the planet. It's amazing. It's absolutely incredible that still one in 10 people in the world fall ill after eating contaminated food. And even more sad and remarkable, 420,000 people die every year of eating contaminated food, despite all of the food safety capabilities that we have available at our fingertips today. As if this wasn't enough a problem, I think during the pandemic, we've all become even more aware that in some parts of the world, there are chronic food scarcity problems, while in others, waste is an enormous and shameful problem. It's also compounded by an understood growing complexity in the food chain, which I think our industry, of course, has to take a responsibility for. So Tetra Pak has a promise. We promise to protect what's good. This concept in this thinking has worked well, thinking about food protection first. And many of the advances, the innovations, have a root in trying to understand how we can better protect the product, how we can better protect uh, consumers, and how we can ensure food safety within our industry. More than 1 billion of our packages around the world now, fast approaching 2 billion, have unique and dynamic QR codes on them. This allows, of course, interaction with consumers so they can understand the provenance of the food products and even the packaging material. But the starting point was to understand how we could improve traceability, trackability and aggregation of the packages through production to ensure good food safety management during production and in warehousing. Our approach, like many, and I think this is uh, uh, very clearly has its benefits, is to take a full system approach when it comes to food safety. For us, that means we have to manage the uh, um, compliance the and the safety of the base materials, the polymers, the paperboard, the carton board, and the aluminium foil and the other constituents of our packaging material. We have to understand how they fit into a package and how that package interacts with the food product inside it over a considerable period of time. And we have to understand how that product comes together with the packaging material in a safe way, largely with a separate system and how our services then promote a food safe system. And this system approach is incredibly important to us. It's incredibly important when it comes to food safety. It's incredibly important when it comes to innovation. And as you will understand, it's absolutely fundamental to driving the decarbonisation of our industry and uh, to, to meet our sustainability goals. We commit not just to food safe products, as I said, but we commit to making them available everywhere. We understand how to manage the safety of our products and we understand how to make them maximally available. But now we're all faced with another challenge and that is of one of sustainability. How we're going to decarbonize the food industry is, an, is of a, a critical question to us. Our strategy is to make a, a package solely from renewable or recycled packaging materials which is 100% recycled and fitting to the low carbon circular economy. Now, it's true we have some natural advantage because roughly 60 to 70% of our package today is actually made from paperboard, but it's also made from aluminium foil and fossil based polymers. We believe, however, that 100% natural fiber based packaging material is within our grasp and will be attainable. Either fiber or fossil alternatives for CAP caps and closures, fiber-based or cellulose-based adhesives and paper-based barrier materials, and even um, fossil alternative polymers to replace the current uh, polyethylene, for example, in our packaging today. And we've been very public about some of the partners who we are working with in an ecosystem way 
in a kind of mutually dependent way in order to make this work. We need to adopt a full ecosystem collaborative model. This is the only way we're going to do it from a development perspective, to deliver food safe and, and sustainable products for tomorrow, to work in ecosystems, not the old linear supply chains. This will deliver speed of innovation, but crucially, it must include the regulatory authorities. If it doesn't, we're simply going to face hurdles and unexpected challenges that we could have managed earlier on and promote speed to market. I leave you with a short summary here when it comes to future proofing packaging material and making food truly safe and available everywhere. We can do this. We can keep food safe. We can make it available, but also making it sustainable is the big challenge today. System thinking is absolutely key. Let's not cherry pick individual components of the food supply chain and of the packaging material for supply chain and apply regulatory pressure to those. Let's have a system thinking on this. If we don't have good regulatory harmonization, it will be a barrier to innovation and it will be a barrier to development and it will force some kind of compromise, either from a sustainability perspective or even worse, food safety perspective. Cross-industry collaboration is absolutely paramount. We are working in this way today and this is a call out to make sure that we can include good regulatory dialogue as a component of that so we avoid surprises and have a better line of sight on what the future looks like.